Hi everybody, welcome. Um, so today's practice is a vata reducing practice. So when it comes to our Ayurvedic uh, constitution, um, one of the ways that we understand ourselves and our minds and our health is through the lens of the doshas. Vata as a, a quality is, um, it's made primarily of air and ether as the elements that underpin it. So uh, it's quite a, a light uh, quality. Uh, vata people tend to be really good at, uh, you know, creative thinking um, and thinking in general. Um, but they also tend to have this uh, light, slightly ungrounded uh, quality to them and sometimes a, a scatty mind. So this morning's practice is designed to pull some energy from the mind down into the body, create a bit of extra gravity in the body and, um, and to ground. Um, this process of uh, pacifying vata isn't always a comfortable one. The analogy that I use quite a lot is if you think of a wave when it crashes onto the shore, it's not just that initial little bit of water that crashes onto the shore. There's the momentum of the ocean that follows along behind it. And it's kind of the same thing when we try to quiet the mind. It's not just making a decision to quiet the mind. It's the momentum of our thinking that follows along behind that. And we have to be steady like the shoreline during that process. So I think that's all I'll say for now. Um, we'll get straight into this uh, with uh, dynamic Shavasana. So start by just moving any props that you have out of the way and lie flat on your back on the mat. And take a moment to get comfortable. Arms by your sides, palms facing down. Close the eyes. And take deep belly breaths throughout this practice. If you imagine that you're breathing into your belly, obviously no breath will go into the abdomen, but you'll recruit the diaphragm more. And focus on exhaling fully each time, drawing the abdomen all the way in and up until you feel your pelvic floor tone at the bottom of each exhale. Now we'll add some simple arm movement. We inhale, lift the arms to the sky. Sweep them overhead until the back of your hands touch the floor. And exhale, release. Arms to the sky and then down by your sides. Do this with a breath count. Inhale, lift the arms for four, two, three, four, exhale, release for four, two, three, four, inhale, lift arms for four, two, three, four, exhale, release for five, Two, three, four, five. Inhale for four. Take your time. Exhale for six. Feel the pelvic floor tone at the bottom of the breath. Inhale for four. Two, 
Exhale for seven. One more round. Inhale for four. And exhale for eight. Take a moment just to lie still, noticing perhaps that those slightly longer exhales have started to calm the nervous system, the mind, the body. And draw the knees into the chest, give them a squeeze. Take a moment to feel the impression of the spine against your mat. Glue the low back to the floor. Make sure that is a firm contact point. Keep the legs where they are. Release the arms down by your sides, palms facing down. The movement of the arms will be the same as before, but now we'll add an action of the legs. So inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Extend your feet to the sky. Press through the heels. Make sure the low back is still pressing down. And exhale, release. Knees to chest, arms down by your sides. And again, inhale, sweep the arms overhead, tuck the chin in, press the heels to the sky. And exhale, release, knees to chest, arms down by your side. Keep doing this for a few more rounds, no breath count. Just focus on making sure that the inhale starts just a split second before the movement starts and the exhale finishes after the movement finishes. Your movement is carried and held inside of your breath. Take yourself through one more round. And then hug the knees into the chest again. Now we'll come into a supine twist. So keep hold of the right knee and extend your left leg on the floor. Reach your right arm out to the side. Breathe in. And then exhale and twist. So knee to the left, gaze to the right, as long as that's okay for your neck. Be aware of your left foot. Just gently extend through the sole of that foot. It's creating a bit more extension, elongation, space through the body. And inhale to release. Exhale, hug that right knee into the chest. And we come into the second side, so draw the left knee in. Extend the right leg long. Reach your left arm out to the side. Breathe in. And then exhale, twist. Knee to the right, gaze to the left. Glue that left shoulder down. Feel the line from the left armpit to the top hip. Spiral that, make it longer. And then inhale to release. This time, exhale, hug both knees into the chest. Now roll off to the right. 
come into a kneeling position on all fours facing the front of your mat. And keep your awareness quite internal, just aware of what's happening inside of you and particularly the sensations inside of the body. So engage the core. Inhale, extend your right leg back. So the foot is no higher than the hip, the toes point down. Exhale, knee to nose, push through the hands, round the back. Again, inhale, extend the leg back. This time, exhale, step the right foot to the outside of the right hand, come into a lunge. If the lunge feels a little bit tight at the moment and you have a block handy, you can rest your hands on the block or even just rest up on the tips of the fingers. So breathe in, stretch the chest forward. You can look forward, but keep the chin in. And exhale, tuck the chin, push through the hands, round the upper back. Feel the shoulder blades move apart. Again, inhale, stretch the chest forward, keep the chin in. And exhale, tuck the chin, push through the hands, round the back. And bring your spine to a neutral position. You might just need to step the hands back slightly here. Inhale, extend your right leg back, all the way back so the foot is at hip height. And exhale, come into four point kneeling pose. Knee to the floor, find that neutral position again. Then we move to the second side. Inhale, extend the left leg back behind you. Push through the heel, point the toes to the floor. And exhale, knee to nose, push through the hands, round the back. Inhale, extend that left leg back, even pressure down through the hands. And exhale, step the foot to the outside of the left hand. Come into that lunge, nothing major, pretty gentle. And inhale, stretch the chest forward, broaden the collarbones. Exhale, tuck the chin, push through the hands, round the back. One more time. Inhale, open the front of the heart, breathe into the front of the lungs. And exhale, push through the hands, round the back. Bring yourself to a neutral spine. Shuffle the hands if you need to. And inhale, extend that left leg all the way back. Your foot is in line with the hip. And exhale, knee to the floor, four point kneeling pose. Take a deep belly breath in. And exhale, come into child's pose. Take the knees wide in child's pose. Keep the arms reaching forward. And stick with that belly breathing, with that focus on the exhale, and drawing the abdomen in and up fully on the exhale until you feel the pelvic floor naturally tone gently. Once you can access that, make that more deliberate, exaggerate that slightly. So that with each exhale, you're engaging Mula Bandha. And inhale, shift yourself forward onto all fours. Shuffle the knees so they're under the hips. And exhale to downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, engage Mula Bandha as you go. So tone the pelvic floor. We'll work dynamically initially. So inhale, lower the knees to the floor. Gaze between the thumbs. And exhale, tuck the toes. Lift the hips, downward facing dog, engage Mula Bandha as you go. With a breath count, lower the knees, inhale for four, two, three, 
four, down dog for six with Mulla Bandha. Two, three, four, five, six. Lower knees for four, internal count. This time down dog for seven with Mulabanda. One more round. Inhale for four. Down dog for eight. Exhale, engage Mulabanda and then hold downward facing dog. And when you're in downward facing dog, just shift your breath count slightly. So you inhale for four, exhale for six, and hold the breath out for two. And as long as you're not holding the breath out for too long, you'll notice that in the pause that that breath hold creates, the mind and in fact everything becomes very still inside of you. Take one more breath in. And then a full breath out. And bend the knees a little bit. Gaze forward and step into rag doll at the top of your mat. So the feet are hip width apart. The outside edge of the feet are parallel. You fold forward, hold onto your elbows. But whichever way you naturally clasp them, hold them the other way. And really press down through the balls of the feet. Feel that weight of the body streaming down through the feet. Lift the sit bones slightly higher. Stretch the front of your torso down towards the floor. Take a moment to acknowledge the weightiness of your body. And allow that weight to drop you deeper into the pose. Take one more breath. And release the hands. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, toe heel your feet to the outer edges of your mat. Turn them out on a 45 degree angle and then sit down in between them for a variation on Malasana. So if the heels are lifted off the floor, grab yourself a prop, a blanket or a bolster, slide it underneath the heels so you have a firm base of support. And bring your hands to prayer. Just press your elbows or your triceps against your inside thighs. And then meet that pressure by pressing the inside thighs against the triceps. You can feel arms against legs, legs against arms. There's a little bit of resistance there. A little bit of effort required. You can feel that that engages the deep abdominal muscles. And also focus on gripping the finger pads against each other. So you'll need these things a little bit further down the track. The awareness of the grip of the fingertips. The feeling of thighs and arms squeezing together. And that awareness of your deep core strength. So take a moment just to have an imprint of that experience so you can access it more easily later. Take one more breath in, lift the chest towards the thumbs. And exhale, release the hands to the floor. 
lift your hips to the sky, toe heel your feet in to hip width apart. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale and fold. And then really slowly roll up to standing, drop the tailbone, lift the front hip bones, and articulate through every vertebrae on the way up. Stand in Tadasana with your eyes closed. Become aware of the base of your spine and send energetic roots down from the spine through the legs and into the earth. From the base of the spine, also lift up so the upper body becomes longer. There's more traction in the back. And gently hug the ribs in, relax the shoulders, and lift through the roof of the mouth. And inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Udva Hastasana, palms face in, neck long. And exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward all the way down, fingertips to floor or hands to your shins. Inhale, halfway lift, pull the spine away from the pelvis. Exhale and fold, tuck the chin in. Inhale to standing, reach the arms to the sky. Hold the arms overhead, exhale fully. Then engage Mula Bandha, hold the breath out, release your arms down by your side. Release Mula Bandha. Let's go again. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Stretch the chest forward as you fold. Hands to the floor or to the shins. Inhale, halfway lift. Broad through the shoulders. Exhale and fold. Tuck the chin in. Inhale to standing. Reach the arms high. Hold the arms overhead, exhale fully, engage Mula Bandha. Hold the breath out, release the arms down. And release Mula Bandha. let's go again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale and fold. Inhale to standing, reach the arms high. Hold the arms here, exhale, engage Mula Bandha. Hold the breath out, release the arms down. And hold here, noticing how that practice of Mula Bandha helps to drop your center of gravity into the pelvis and ground your awareness within the body. And open your eyes. Let's set up for pyramid pose. So we'll move into pyramid and then directly into revolve triangle. So if you know that you need a block for this, have it ready nearby. Step your left foot back about a meter. Turn the left foot on a 45 degree angle. Make sure your right foot is pointing to 12 o'clock. And make sure there's enough distance between the feet that your hips can be square with the front edge of your mat. Now inhale, reach both arms to the sky. 
exhale to fold forward stretch the arms forward if you need a little bend in the front leg to keep the spine straight please do rest your fingertips on the floor inhale halfway lift stretch the chest forward pull your right hip crease back and then exhale and fold forward for pyramid. Take a few moments in pyramid. Really push your feet quite firmly into the ground. A grounding action that is still energizing for the body. And align yourself so it feels like there are little pockets of air between each of your vertebrae. And inhale, half lift. Coming into revolve triangle, exhale, left hand to the floor or your block, right arm to the sky. Really check in with that right hand, make sure it's pointing to directly to 12 o'clock. And if right hand to the sky is too much for you in this twist, you can always just take the palm to the sacrum with the elbow bent instead. Feel that compression of the organs of the abdomen. But stretch the hands apart so the chest is as open as possible. Make a decision to be absolutely still. No unnecessary blinking of the eyes or twitching of the fingers or adjusting clothes or really anything. Inhale, release that right hand, halfway lift. Hold your half lift, exhale, bring your hands to your waist. Push through the feet, inhale to standing. Step the left foot forward, release the arms by the sides, close the eyes, be still again. And we get ready for the second side. Step the right foot back, setting up for pyramid pose in exactly the same way as before. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Keeping the waist long, exhale to fold. Optional small bend in that front knee. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold and then hold. Press down through that back heel. Stretch the back of the heart towards the left toes. And inhale, halfway lift. Revolve triangle, exhale, right hand down, left hand high, or left hand to the sacrum. What you often find is those little twitches and fidgets, those involuntary movements in the body, are actually a sign of underlying mental agitation, unprocessed memories and thoughts, uh, just underlying agitation from the day. So if we can still the body, although we have that initial period of resistance, it actually helps to still the mind much more quickly as well. Inhale to release that left hand, halfway lift. Bring your hands to your waist, exhale. Inhale to standing. Step the right foot forward, release the arms by your sides, close your eyes and breathe.
and open the eyes. I'm going to come into a couple of balancing poses of different kinds, uh, just to test this focus that we're able to bring to the practice. Also, just to notice where inattention has become a habit, because when we're inattentive in balancing poses, that's when we tend to lose balance or fall out of the pose. So bring your hands to prayer, Anjali Mudra. Bring your feet together. Coming into Warrior Three, transfer the weight into the right foot. Extend your left leg back and up, and stretch the chest forward. We have this capital T shape with the body. Roll that left hip down slightly. Steer your toes towards the ground. Stretch the chest forward. And there'll be a little bit of a wobble through that supporting ankle. That's okay. Just focus on pressing down through that big toe mount. Also gently lift the arch of that foot. Take one more breath. And a little bend in the supporting knee. Come up to standing. Keep your hands in prayer. Feet together. Close the eyes. One breath to reset. Make it count. And we come into the second side. Transfer the weight into the left leg. Extend the right leg back and up. Tip the chest forward. The power and control for this pose, it comes from the belly. So radiate that strength and power from the abdomen, out through the legs, forward through the chest. Stay connected to the breath. It'll help you stay supple rather than rigid. Take one more breath. And then release. Nice work. Release the arms down. Close your eyes. Take that breath. Open the eyes as we come into a balancing pose of a different kind, crow pose. We inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward, plant the palms flat on the ground, bend your knees as much as you need to here. You can lift up onto the tippy toes, tuck your knees into your triceps, high up towards the armpits. Shift your weight forward into the hands, bend the elbows like you would in Chaturanga Dandasana. And at some point you'll feel that your weight is out of your feet and in your hands, and at that point you might lift one foot off the ground at a time, or maybe both. Really steady the gaze. Push the hands down, push the knees down till you feel the hips lift. And then release. Come into Ragdoll. Just taking the weight out of the wrists for a moment. Once again, connecting to that feeling of weight in your body. Allow that feeling to ground you and drop you deeper into the pose. And release the hands. Step back into downward facing dog. And inhale, lower your knees to the floor, four-point kneeling. Exhale to child's pose, hips to heels, belly to thighs. Elbows will bend a little bit. Inhale, shift forward, all fours for four. Two, three, four. Child's pose for six. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold out for two. Inhale for four. Shift forward. Ch 
Child's pose for five. Exhale. Hold out for three. Inhale for four. Shift forward. Exhale for four. That's Jammu you can hear in the background. Hold out for four. And hold child's pose. Relax the breath. And just take a moment to allow yourself to rest into the supportive presence of the earth. We'll come into a very gentle flow. Inhale, shift forward through all fours, then bend the elbows, drop your hips to the floor, cobra pose. And exhale, lower your forehead to the floor. And push into the hands, inhale, lift into cobra, keep the hips on the ground. It doesn't have to be a huge back bend. Exhale to child's pose. Engage Mula Bandha on the way back. Let's do that again. Inhale, shift through all fours. Bend the elbows, lower the hips. And exhale, forehead to the floor. Inhale, push into the hands, lift the chest. Exhale to child's pose, engage Malabanda. Take yourself through two more rounds on your own. And hold child's pose when you arrive there. Just focus on that in and out action of your abdominal breathing. And walk the hands in, roll up to a seated position. And swing the legs around in front of you. So set up now for Adhamatsyandrasana, seated twist. So draw the right knee into the chest. Take the right foot to the outside of the left knee. You can keep that left leg straight if you like, or you can bend the knee and swing the foot around next to the hip. The three points in particular should be glued to the floor. That top foot and then each of your sit bones. Take the right fingertips behind you on the floor. Inhale, reach the left arm to the sky. Allow it to pull you tall. And then exhale to twist. Either elbow to your outer thigh or wrap the forearm around the shin. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale to deepen into the twist. Gaze over the back shoulder. Relax both of your shoulders.
It's almost like without any conscious effort on your part, everything becomes quite still and internal here. On your next breath in, gaze forward, even if the eyes are closed. Untwist and take a moment between sides. So notice the space between each of your breaths, between each of your thoughts. And then extend the legs forward. Coming into the second side. Draw the left knee into the chest, left foot to the outside of the right knee. Option to bend the right knee and swing the foot next to the hip. Glue down through, through the top foot and the sit bones. Bring the left fingertips behind you on the ground. Inhale, reach the right arm high. And exhale to twist. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, gaze over the back shoulder, close the eyes. So allow that open awareness to be your home base. And inhale to gaze forward and release. Resting less in the contents of your awareness than the open space of awareness itself. And extend your legs forward. Sitting up for Pashimottanasana. Flex the feet, sit up tall. If you need slightly bent knees here, you can. If you have a strap and the hamstrings are tight, just set it up like a stirrup around the soles of the feet. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. And exhale, stretch the chest for the toes. Hold on to the feet if they're within reach, otherwise, hold on to your shins. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Allow yourself to settle and take this just as far as you can, keeping the length in the spine.
Two more breaths. And then release. And swivel yourself around. Lie down onto your back with your legs bent, soles of the feet on the floor, bridge set up position. <coughs> A very subtle action. Inhale, lift your hips off the floor. And then exhale to lower down. Inhale, lift the hips. And exhale to lower down. Do that two more times. And then hug the knees into the chest. Rock the knees side to side or take a figure of eight action if you like. <coughs> Make your way into Shavasana. And lie flat with no props if you like or a bolster under the knees and something over your eyes. You can really let go here. Gravity pushes you down. The floor pushes up to hold you in place. So there's nothing in particular you need to do.
Allow your breathing to become deeper. Wriggle fingers and wriggle toes. Roll your head from side to side. And if you like, you can reach the arms overhead and stretch out. And plug your left leg into the ground. Roll onto your right side. Curl up into a ball. And then make your way up to a seated position on your meditation prop. For closing pranayama and meditation. So the nice upright spine and the eyes closed. Take a deep breath in, and a full breath out. And begin to breathe so that both your inhale and your exhale are an even count of six. In for six, out for six. And when that six, six count is well established, add in a four count exhale retention. You breathe in for six, out for six, and then hold the breath out for four. Once again, just drop your mind into the still place inside of that pause where everything becomes absolutely quiet. Take yourself through two more rounds of breath.
the end of that last round, reaffirm the position of the spine, keep the eyes closed, breathe in a way that feels nice and easy. Now sense the mind at the level of the brain. To be a perfectly still, very clear and calm lake. That lake is so still and so clear that it can reflect the image of the landscape around it perfectly. Every now and again, you might find a thought intrudes into this awareness. If it does, just imagine that thought as a ripple that rises to the surface of the lake and then drops back down into the waters from where it came. Now become aware of the space just behind your head. And in that space, picture a bright full moon. And just as the lake represents your mind, the moon represents your consciousness. The light from that moon illuminates the lake below it. Just as the still lake of your mind reflects the light and the image of that moon without blemish. Notice how this has a very tranquil quality. How it feels very peaceful and still. And sense that the moon is beginning to move forward slowly to a point just above the roof of your mouth. In its new position, the light from the moon continues to illuminate the surface of the lake. It says the lake continues to reflect the image of the moon faithfully. And notice that the light from the moon is becoming more and more luminous the longer you rest your awareness there.
until the moon becomes so bright and so luminous that a single beam of light can't help but shoot forward through the third eye, through the eyebrow center, into an infinite distance in front of you. Understand that that single beam of light is the aspect of your individual consciousness that is now and has always been connected to its source in universal consciousness. Rest now in the awareness of that connection between universal consciousness, individual consciousness, and mind. Allow your breathing to become deeper. And bring the hands to prayer, Anjali Mudra in front of you. Bow your chin to your chest. Namaste.